constructive. The words that you just used, prevent, create crisis, you know, are not words that are constructive. It's creating damage in order to bring other people down, in order to have more people on the street, in order to make change. And that is for me, you know, it's like the game is the game, mm -hmm. right? That's becoming a part of it in a way. And I have parents and they have money that they've saved their entire life to have pensions. So I am not in at all, um, I would say, as arrogant as, you know, some people are. I'm not saying that you guys are, but, you know, I would say to make such a bold move that might just kill the financial state for my parents and their, you know, very fragile financial state mm -hmm. in order, you know, to, to just spend their elderly years. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, activists that are very classical, you know, because I've not, I'm not like that, and I come from a different background, they sometimes establish a, a list of things that you can do as an a activist. And that if you are not willing to sacrifice certain things, then you don't care enough. Right. And I think that we live in a world that, where we have so little of our own that people are very, you know, they're very guarded, guarding, they're guarding it in a very big way and with reason. Mm -hmm. And you can be active in a million years, in a million different ways. You can be active in a million different ways. And, you know, everybody has a different red line mm -hmm. that if you cross it, they go crazy. But it's different for each and every person. So I think that trying to take control, and that's what it is, trying to take control of, uh, about the entire, you know, like, flow of the movement, mm -hmm. that, you know, you need to be very bold and kind of also very arrogant to do in such way, instead of trying to think about how we become the change ourselves, you know? I think that you, there are a million things that you can do in order to raise awareness, to make people take control over their lives, mm -hmm. to maybe, you know, create cooperatives and, you know, uh, you know, like people's banks, maybe create new channels of media, um, you know, make people not consume as more, right. as, uh, as much as they do, for example, right. you know. I mean, people spend their, t their lives in malls. They can also spend it, you know, playing chess. Yes. So, I mean, you don't need to, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I think that for me, mm -hmm. personally, because I know that some people think otherwise, but for me, you know, I'm all for creation and not destruction, and I think that it's very easy to find out uh, an idea like what you said about, you know, how to create some sort of crisis, but you have no idea how this will affect the entire world community. Right. And, um, you know, it might just bring people on their knees in a way that they will not be able to, to raise up again. So it's just something you need to think about. Uh, uh, last question. Yeah. One of the big issues in, in, in Occupy has to do with representation. Who gets to represent the movement? Uh, and when you do things, who, mm -hmm. who are you accountable to? And this question of who you're accountable to yeah. is, is a big one because if you, if, if a political actor is not accountable to anyone, then you have a situation where they can develop, they can, you know, do what they want. Okay. So my question would be, who are you accountable to? As a, a, you know, a, a protest leader in Israel, as a movement person, as the head of an organization under formation, what is the group or, or, or constituency that you turn to to know like, what your limits should be? Right. <clears throat> so the past eight months have been very, very, um, I would say, very, I mean, I felt very much responsible, but it wasn't accountable for anybody. The reason is that it was very chaotic. You know, so I would be able to, you know, do, do certain things and get criticized for it and learn from it. And I would go on TV and apologize and say I'm mistaken, you know, but it's just out of feeling responsible. So I made myself in a way accountable for the situation. However, you know, if I would decide not to do this anymore, nobody can say but you, mm -hmm. you know, we voted for you or something like that. By creating an organization, I am becoming accountable. I just want to explain to you the structure of the organization that I'm establishing because I think it's a good idea. Um, it's, I'm creating a non-profit organization that has shares mm -hmm. in it. 
and I'm initiating as many shares as citizens in Israel. Basically, anybody can buy only one for five dollars, mm -hmm. and you cannot pass it along. Mm -hmm. So, in that way, if, like, for example, <clears throat> even ten thousand people, but let's just be up to it. So, let's say a hundred thousand people each buy one share, mm -hmm. and each person decides to donate a few extra dollars, you know, just because they can, and it's not a lot of money, mm -hmm. uh, considering that you have seed money to create actions with. Anybody who has a share can see the financial state of their organization. And you have a general assembly once a year, where you uh, decide about the way that the movement, what kind of discourse the movement is going to take. So basically by doing so, you create a political mass, you know, you, you have a politi political power outside the parliament, right? You uh, can raise money without, you know, like giving one person too much power, mm -hmm. and you let people be a part of the decision-making process about what kind of, uh, you know, issues are we going to campaign, for example, like move on or whatever. Right, right. Um, so this is basically the first time that I'm, you know, saying, okay, I'm putting my roots here, you know, I'm being accountable for this, and, you know, this organization will get as big as people will want it to. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love to.